morning YouTube. I ordered the uh, one kilo or one liter pack of the uh, West Systems epoxy resin and hardener. On uh, discussion with my mate up the road, he'd given me the original tin of uh, epoxy resin and a bottle with some hardener in. It turns out it was probably acetone in the bottle, not uh, hardener. So uh, that would explain why it didn't work. So I've cleaned off the uh, residue, which is still to this day remained uh, fluid, shall we say. And I'm going to attempt a, a new start again today with the stuff that I know works. I shall probably do a test on the old resin as well, just to, to be sure that it wasn't a, a, a thing about the shelf life. But as far as I know, there is a great long shelf life on this stuff. And if, even if it settles out, you can shake it up again and it, uh, it reconstitutes itself. So we're going to knock up a batch and put another piece on the transom and see how we go with that. And if it's working, appears to be working, then I'll mix up some more uh, to the peanut butter consistency with the flour to fill the screw holes as well. So here goes. In addition to the uh, resin pack, I've um, procured a supply of different sized uh, syringes. There's some which are 20 mil and some which are 60 mil and there's some others in between. I just got hold of a, a cotrel of them and I'm going to still use the glass jars to decant the poppy the resin and the hardener into and then I can draw out with a syringe dedicated to each one the amount of resin and hardener. It's a 5 to 1 ratio so uh, if I draw out 5 mils of resin obviously I've got to draw out 1 mil of hardener. That's why I've got the different sized syringes so that it's not uh, too hard to read the amounts that you're bringing out. Okay here we go. Let's slide this into position above the screws that are there, add it into place, slide it across a bit, central. Already there's something I noticed straight away, uh, the hard nut is actually a, a yellowy sort of colour rather than uh, clear, which the uh, stuff in the other bottle was. and. Uh, I can feel some warmth, just a tiny amount of warmth, I think it's more just my imagination in the box I've mixed up and that's getting thick now already. So it wasn't uh, it wasn't right earlier. But like I said the other day, I got downhearted by it. It's just one of those things that happens things get confused. So I'm working it in now with this brush. I cut the bristles off this brush down to about 13, 14 mil, something like that. So it's nice and stiff so I can actually use it to work the resin in. seems to be going nice and clear again. So I'll just use this up and then make another batch up. I did 20 mils and it's covered this area and there's still a bit left. Say the guy in red barn boats he uses a toothbrush to stick everything down with, put the resin in with. I'm not giving up my toothbrush for anyone. I'm also using some uh, little drinking cups which I bought from uh, the shop the other day. 
They're disposable and cheap, but uh, you can peel the resin off when it's gone off because it won't stick to the plastic. Right, so that was 20 mil, and I probably could have done with maybe 30 mil. Good news, everyone! It's uh, gone off. <laughs> if you get the right ingredients, it always works every time. One thing, um, probably someone's going to pick up on. I keep forgetting to put a glove on and they say that uh, you should uh, wear gloves when you're handling the stuff because you could develop an allergy to it. I promise that I will remember and wear gloves whilst I'm uh, applying the fiberglass. So there we go. Well I'm going to take the outside of the uh, transom off and I'm just going to put a piece of sh uh, this tissue, fiberglass tissue, right across and down onto the flotation chamber and as I said earlier on I'm leaving it clear for these screws but two of the three are stuck in and that's because the resin's run down and it's uh, gone off and it's bonded the screws in. The easy way of getting them out is with a soldering iron. I've taken the tip out and this is warmed up now and hopefully it's warmed up enough. If you place the end of the heating iron part of it straight onto the screw head, the heat should transfer through and melt the glue slightly so that uh, you can take it out. It's one of the things that um, maybe uh, some people might not realize, but actually a bit of heat and in some cases steam, especially for wood, you can take apart pretty much any glue. I think the only one that um, claims not to be able to is cascomite, which was a, a powdered glue you mixed with water and that was used in boat building for a long time before the modern glues came in. And I've no idea if you can take it apart or not, but I have a feeling I've tried to take some apart in the past and it didn't work. So um, put the heat on there for a little bit. We'll just go backwards and forwards, take a bit of time. And there we go. That's uh, done enough to break the seal on that one. So place it gently on the screw head, give it a bit of pressure because obviously you don't want to melt the fiberglass too much around it. And uh, Bob's your uncle, it will come out. And this is a good tip for uh, if you've got a screw and the head's sheared off. If you can dig around it with a, a small chisel and then get a soldering iron on it, you can heat up the screw in the wood to the point where it will char the wood around it. And you should, if you're lucky and you've managed to expose enough, get some long nose pliers or maybe even uh, some mole grips on it and unwind it out of the hole. Then you'd re-drill slightly larger and plug with a new piece of wood and some glue and then you'll be able to re-drill the hole and put it uh, put the screw back in a new screw back in it's particularly handy for for fine screw work fine screws there we go they're both ouch I'm still a bit hot they're both out and now hello I just found out there's another screw and where's that huh? oh no that was just a bit of resin that's dropped down through from the uh, outside. Right, I'm going to be doing measuring up and marking out and cutting that sheet for going in there and then I'll bring you back at some point. Here we have the 
back end of the transom. Yesterday I put a new layer of uh, glass tissue on the inside covering the whole of the back down onto the seat and then today I've put on four layers of chopped strand matting and then I'm going to bring it up finely flush with maybe another sheet of the uh, tissue and probably fill some of the screw holes as well. I covered the back of the I seat with brown tape, parcel tape and then waxed it and then put it in place with a couple of screws and the clamps that you can see using some of the good old wedges and blocks to keep it uh, nice and flush against the back and support it in place because it's only uh, held in temporary at the moment to give me a firm backing to add the chop strand and roller it so it gets rid of all the air bubbles between the layers and now I'm going to leave it to cure. Well I've uh, sanded and filled any little bits of around the seam with uh, thickened epoxy and also the two outside holes on that level and those three down there at the bottom end of the, where the transom used to be. And now I'm debating whether to apply some of the tissue over the top of the whole lot or just leave it as it is. I'm uh, going to have a cup of coffee now and make up my mind as to what I'm going to do. But I'm pleased with the way it came out. It is a bit wavy but once you get both sides of the wooden transom plates on and the backrest it's going to be nice and it's really just to, to close the gap but it's all it's all nice and solid so I'm pleased with the way that's come out it's my first attempt at any fiberglass in second attempt I suppose you could say well I sat there and had a coffee and I thought about it and I thought I'll stick a bit of that tissue over the top just to bring everything all together and uh, so I mixed up a batch and rolled it onto the transom and then stuck the mesh on and then rolled it some more over the top of it I'm going to do another coat or possibly two today uh, I'll trim it up first and then roll on some more coats or squeegee on some coats actually uh, I found out something yesterday as well by the time I did that in the evening the place was so warm that uh, the stuff went off really quickly whilst I was even rolling it on you could see it was getting hard getting stiffer and stiffer and uh, so I had to work quick but I got it on there and it stuck nicely I'm going to trim it up and then put some more on fortunately it's a lot cooler today uh, as well so uh, I won't have that problem I took the epoxy and hardener in this morning before it got too warm in case it got warm to uh, help with the keep the curing time as uh, long as possible because it did go quick yesterday so that's uh, where we are at the moment well that's uh, the finish of today I've put two extra coats of epoxy onto the transom and uh, I think now the next job to do probably is have a good tidy up and clear out the stuff from the inside of the hull and a bit of a clean up because there's a lot of dust in there now and then decide is it going to be something to do with the floor or the side rails next? Um, I shall have to sleep on that one, but definitely tomorrow there's going to have to be some tidying up done. And I've still got a little bit of fiberglass to do on the um, those little reinforcing strips that go in to the keel, into the bilge keel and um, so I might clear out and then glass those up tomorrow and glue them in and whilst I'm doing that I can decide whether I go with doing the side rails or doing the floor 
The floor is quite complicated because I've got to make the cross members up and get them all flowing right across and in line, you know, through from fore to aft so I can mount the, uh, the floor planks. And the side rails is technical because I've got to steam them and bend them into place. So both of them are quite big tasks and I know I've been promising it for ages about bending the side rails, it's been my goal. So I'll have a good thing about it tomorrow whilst I'm clearing out the uh, hull and clearing up the stuff here as well. And a big pile of rubbish down here. Uh, I don't know. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I guess we'll have to wait and see for part seven. Cheerio.